designing with ecology, that's the challenge for a good part of my professional life. I wanted to make our cities green, and my solution is to remake our cities as constructed ecosystems. Now, what are the attributes of ecosystems that we need to emulate and replicate in our cities? These are some of them. We need to emulate the ecological, biological structure of, e of cities, of ecosystems. We need to emulate the ecosystem, the biodiversity, provision of ecosystem services, biointegration, responsive to climate, use and cycling materials, connect, connectivity and nexus, the hydrology of cities, the symbiosis between our built environment and the natural environment, the homeostasis in ecosystems, fruit production and independent uh, fruit availability, and succession. Now this is not a comprehensive list, but it's a start for me. So now, the big challenge for me then, nearly 30, 40 years ago, was to see how we can implement these. So the first question, the first attribute, is the ecosystem biological structure. Now, ecologists sees the Earth as covered by this thin film called the biosphere, which is about 10,000 meters um, in height. And within this biosphere are where all the life forms in the world exist and live. And within this biosphere, there are units in nature, which is the ecosystem, which is the ecologist's model of, of nature. Now, the ecosystem consists of body constituents, that was a body constituents, acting together to form a whole. And this is what we must try and emulate and replicate in what we do. Now, the two components, the, the biotic constituents and the abiotic, have very complex relationships, as you can see in this diagram. But then it occurred to me about when I first started in my professional life, is what we're doing is that everything that we make and do as architects and engineers is physical synthetic, artificial. So where is the organic and the biotic constituents? And so we started to, to map the different ways this could be done. You can put all in one location, so you can see the first diagram. You can have a spotty relationship in the second. You have a stepping stone relationship, but the ideal relationship between the biotic constituents and the abiotic constituents is the weaving pattern that you can see in the last diagram. And so this is the first experiment that I did um, maybe about 30, 30, 35 years ago. And this is a 30, 40-story building. I started to put vegetation buildings. And uh, I love this image because it is emblematic of, for me, what a green architecture should look like. It should be non-pristine. It should be fuzzy. It should be indeterminate. And uh, some of my friends says it looks really hairy. <laughs> so the second proposition is now, beyond just putting vegetation and, and party constituents, uh, we have to go beyond that. And so what I, try to do, what I try to do is to enhance the biodiversity through putting the vegetation, because what we, do, what we as human beings do is we simplify nature. We reduce it down to almost its minimum denominator. And so, um, now, hang on a minute. This is a project we finished about six months ago, and you can see the vegetation on the facade and on the ground still to be growing. But we use this as an as opportunity to enhance the biodiversity. For all our projects now, what we do is that we pr prepare a biodiversity matrix, um, which is something like this. And the biodiversity matrix starts with identifying the habitats we create in development. The habitats could be on the ground, it could be in planters, it could be in the, uh, in inside the building, it could be on walls. And so the first thing we do in ecological design is to, is to establish different habitats within the project. The next is to identify the native fauna that we want to bring back that are not hazardous into, to, to human beings for these habitats. But having identified the list of fauna, particularly that locality, and we got very careful that these are not invasive species, the next is to bring back uh, the fauna, the flora that will attract the fauna. And so having done this, the next stage is to then is to design, see how these two inter inter interact within this matrix, 
and from there we designed the landscape condition uh, for, the, for the species to survive over the seasons of the year. And so in this way we enhance the biodiversity of, of the locality. Now that's for a, a building which is medium rise. Now how do you do this for a high rise building? And so this is a project which we're working on now. These are the different habitats on the high rise building. And then we start to look at the proximity of the green areas uh, within the site. We look at the, the, the green areas which is near the site. And from there we started to prepare the biodiversity matrix that you saw before. And then what, we did, what we've done is to stratify the habitats in the high rise. That means for the lower part of the site, the, the, the species that we want to bring back are dragonflies, then next would be the butterfly zone, then next would be the uh, songbird zone, and finally at the upper part we have the migratory bird zone. So these are the, 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 the fauna they want to bring back, and then we start to identify the, the flora that will, bring, that will track the, the, these uh, fauna into the, the, those habitats. And this is another scheme that we're working on now, uh, where we had a spiraling version of the habitats climbing up the building. The next is ecological connectivity and nexus. Everything in nature is connected. In fact, everything we do is connected. If you, whoops, if you flip a switch, it's connected to, to everything that has impact on, on nature. And so now, in how do, in all, what we do as human beings is that we chop up the landscape. It's like turning a cow to a burger. We, we, we change a homogeneous ecosystem into patches. And so what we try to do as architects is to repair nature, to make nature whole again. Now, what happens if you have two um, patches of nature which is bifurcated by a road? Then what happens if you bridge across it and you vegetate it? Then this is what we call the eco-bridge. Then by doing so, you enhance the biodiversity of the location. Now, this is a project we designed in Bangalore. We, we collected all the species along the edge of the development, which is next to Forest Reserve, and then we stretch across the site. And we call this the green infrastructure, and that's the first thing we do when we design a master plan. Having done the green infrastructure, we lay the roads. Then we suddenly discover, oh dear, the roads bifurcate our green infrastructure. And so, so this is what we use to, to, to rectify this. Half an eco-bridge that connects the green area from one part of the site to the other part of the site, and this is what EcoBridge could look like. Now, the EcoBridge location is crucial. You, can, you cannot just willy-nilly put it anywhere along the road. You have to check these species on both sides of the, of the road to, to, to build the EcoBridge. Now, vertical connectivity is, the, is in this project that we designed, which is a data center for a Scandinavian company. The vegetation starts from one corner, goes up, goes across to one side, goes to the back side, and goes to the right-hand side, and comes back down again. Now, this is the, uh, the cassette, the system that we use is a cassette system. We put a cassette next to the fresh air intake so that the vegetation actually acts as a, a first level of air filter that scrubs the air before it enters the air conditioning system. Another project this time is the last pattern, which is the intertwining of, of, of vegetation. So this is a project uh, where with every facade, we climb up one floor. And so it's a ramp facade that goes all the way around the building, and next to the ramp facade, there's a walkway um, in which people could service the, uh, the planters and the vegetation. But we call this a linear, linear park. And if you stretch this linear park throughout this whole building, it is about uh, 1.3 kilometers. The next is the hydrology, because water is what life is all about. When the soil must look into the planets, the first thing you look at is there water in that planet. Because if that's water, that's organic life. And, and this, is a, 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 this is a schematic of what a hydrological cycle could be, both internal within the built environment and external. But anything that's outside, we should bring it back to the ground. Water should not be drained, because once it goes to a drain, it goes to rivers, and the rivers have gone to the seas and it's gone forever. So we need to bring it back to the ground, we need to recycle, we need to harvest it, we need to close the loop as much as possible, and that's some of the methods for doing this. And so within the scheme, for the black water, we have constructed wetland instead of a mechanical system, so that the, the black water goes through a series of uh, ponds, and so that by the treatment ponds, so by the time we reach the last one, it is almost potable. The next one, ecosystem provision of ecosystem services. Now, ecosystem services are what nature does for us for free, without human intervention, like photosynthesis, sequestering of contaminating gases. Now, 
this is so complex that it's almost, it is virtually, it's actually impossible for technology to imitate it and to emulate it. And so what do we do? Because with decreasing deforestation, we're daily losing the opportunity for the planet to provide ecosystem services. And so the approach is to augment built systems with biotic constituents. Now, those back to this diagram, what we need to do is to try and augment it in such a way that we collect all the species that are existing and, do it and use a series of ecological fingers that weaves the vegetation and the, the biotic constituents into the abiotic constituents. And so you start with the eco-infrastructure, and then we try and weave the two together as in this pattern. And on the left-hand side is the, is the uh, biotic constituents, which is collected by this corridor, stretched by fingers into the built environment, and then the right-hand side of the built environment. So it's just like two hands sort of clasped. We try and integrate the two together. Now, this is a scheme that we did uh, in the island of Reunion, uh, which is off the coast of Madagascar there and that you know, we have a series of ecological fingers going from the left-hand side to the right-hand side and the, and the built environment from the right-hand side going all the way down. This is the view from the hill looking down, the, the green infrastructure going into the hills uh, as a series of striations and the, uh, and the, uh, and the abiotic constituents flowing down in between these. And so that is the one way of bringing the ecological constituents in as close as possible to the abiotic constituents. And we worked out about 30 meters spacing between one and the other. Now, again, we have an issue of bifurcating for roads going across the entire site. So instead of having an a eco bridge, what we have here then is an eco undercroft that goes underneath the road. And so here the vegetation continues, this length is connected and goes underneath the road all the way up to the hills. Next would be the responsiveness to climate, because ecosystems respond to climate at different biomes along in the planet. And so uh, at different climatic zones, there are different species type, and this shows the different climatic zones in the planet. You can see there's a whole variety of climates within the, the, uh, within the planet. We started to develop a system of what we call low energy, low carbon design, and these are the different methods of doing this. But let me just look at one, which is the passive mode. Now, the diagram shows a straight line going across, which is the, uh, what engineers do, uh, ask us to do. Consistent temperature, consistent humidity, consistent uh, air change throughout the whole year, whether it's winter, summer, or mid-season. Now, and the dotted line, the dashed line, shows the climate conditions on the outside, which is in, like in a temperate zone. It is a jolly cold winter and a very hot summer. But if we adopt those techniques called bioclimatic, te bioclimatic techniques, as in that red box, we can actually improve the conf configuration in the little red line without any technology, without any mechanical electrical systems. And so the idea is what I call an umbrella architecture. Umbrella is an incredible cybernetic device. Depending on where the direction of the wind or the rain or the sun is, you can angle it or direct the umbrella in which you can keep out the rain, the wind, and the sun, and you make yourself comfortable underneath the umbrella. Now, my dream, my golden chalice, is to build an umbrella building which is automated, but I haven't been able to do that yet. And so I started to do a series of experiments which you want to call umbrella buildings. Now, this was the early buildings we did, where this time we put a, a louvered umbrella over this house. Now, the louvered umbrella lets in the morning sun, keeps out the hot midday sun, angle to keep us sun, and keeps out the afternoon sun. And it sh ideally, it should be orientated north-south, but in this instance, it is not exactly north-south because of the site condition. And then uh, the, the swimming pool is used as an evaporative cooling device to bring cool air into the building. And there's the floor plan of the building and the energy consumption is considerably lower um, than what it is for a normal house. Next would be biointegration. Now, this is another complex uh, uh, challenge. If we're able to biointegrate everything that we do, we make, and we build, and our production systems seamlessly and benignly with the natural environment, there won't be any, net, you know, there won't be any environmental issues. And so bio-integration bio is actually the crucial aspect of ecological design. Now, these are the four infrastructures 
Now, most people are aware of the green. A lot of architects and plans do that now. A lot of architects are aware of the blue infrastructure on the left-hand side. But our human society is an infrastructure as well. Our, so our social, economic, political, institutional, educational systems form an uh, infrastructure um, that, that, that determines what fiscal systems we build. And then on top of that, technology is infrastructure which is the roads, the drains, uh, infra the infrastructures and the structures and, and the, even the artifacts that we make are the grey items. And ecological design of saving the world, if you like, by integration is to bring all these together into a whole you know, design. And so back to this scheme that we did in Bangalore, um, this is the mix, the weaving of all these four infrastructures into a single uh, whole. Now, materials. Now, materials actually has a significant impact on the environment. But when we design for materials, we're not looking at just the built system and the biosphere because, you know, in this, in this general system theory model, um, we t the built system and its relationship with the environment, it takes the inputs of materials, energy, and this people, and then gives out outputs of energy materials. And the built system itself becomes a waste and then a source of life. And so to close the loop, as what nature does in ecosystems, we need to look at the impacts of the built system at its first creation, at the first impact, the impact on doing its operational, and the impact and then its useful life. And we need to close the loop by bringing it back into the built environment as much as possible, or we seamlessly and benignly integrate it back into the, into the, into the biosphere. Now, to implement this requires a change in mindset and the just household recycling is not enough. It has to be done at the infrastructure scale. And so this is my challenge today. This is the story of my professional life. How to make our cities become constructed ecosystems. Thank you very much. <laughs>